Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and sometimes gouache. And today we are doing our gouache painting project titled Candle. Oh, ah. ooh, ah. Ooh. This is a great project. I'm actually is, really excited to take this to you. That is a cool project. Thank you. And we have Keenan here working the cameras. Oh, hello. And I know that this seems um, like a lot, but I'm telling you it's so much easier than you're thinking it is. Okay, you guys got this, no problem at all. Good, I'm We're glad be you said that. What? I'm glad you said that. I was stressing. Well, take a breath, kids. We're gonna do this together and it's gonna be great. So our very first step is we are going to sketch. Now, before you stress out, it's you, you can do this, I'll walk you through it. Um, step two, we're gonna do our background. Step three, we'll paint the candlestick portion. Step four, we will paint the flame portion. And step five, we will be doing the bokeh. Okay, so my goal with this project was to create like a kind of feeling, not only of a lit up candle in a dark room, but kind of like the idea that there are multiple lit up candles far away. And that's why we have this kind of bokeh element where there's another light source kind of going on somewhere else. But that was a creative choice on my part, which means that you can change that. So if you wanna do this to where there's no bokeh and it's just a single candle in the room, um, I will show you how to do that, okay? Sweet. So um, the paint brushes that I'm using are around two, round six, and around 12. I cut my watercolor paper in half and I taped it using my Holbein soft tape. I got a pencil to do some sketching and I have five colors for this project. My very first color is ivory black. My second color is permanent magenta. Nope primary magenta. Mm. My third color is primary cyan. My fourth color is primary yellow. And my last color is permanent white, which you cannot see. At it's all. White on a white paper. Okay. We are going to do our oath and then we'll start painting. Okay. Okay. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. And I love starting that way because sometimes we approach something with the idea that we got to be better than someone else for it to be worth our time. And that's not true, my friend. It's not how it works. Okay? Okay. What? I'm glad you told me that. <laughs> or maybe it's more about we have to justify the time it takes to do something and the justification we find is if it's, if we're good at it or if we can make money off of it. But what I'm hoping that you will find in this is the justification is the joy in just creating. And that is enough. That's all it needs to be. It doesn't need to be good. It doesn't need to be frame worthy. You don't need to sell it. You don't even need to show anybody. Nobody even needs to know that you do this. If it makes you happy, Make it a priority. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. I got my pencil. It says I'm an artist, which is great. And I'm going to start by sketching my candle. So what we're looking for here is we are, and you can see my paper is dirty already, but I'm going to paint black over it. So I decided just to leave it and not get a new fresh paper and waste a sheet. I don't need to. Opaque. Uh, gouache is opaque, so I can just paint over it. Now, and I'm gonna look at where I want my candle to be. So you can go off this reference photo or you can make your own. And I'm just gonna start by drawing two parallel lines that are kind of in the center of my painting. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty thick. So let's narrow those in. And let's do it about here. And if I'm looking at my reference photo, this is going up not totally halfway, but a little bit halfway, okay? And you can see my lines are not straight or perfect. That's not what it's about. We're just kind of laying down our structure. And I'm also not gonna erase a lot of lines because again, gouache is gonna cover it. So I have my candle and I have to think too that this candle doesn't go all the way to the edge. It fades into darkness. So you don't wanna make your candle too short because then you won't have the space to do a value change into the black. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I see. And then when we get to the top, we want to show that it's dimensional. So we're going to have a half circle curve in this way, and it can be a little bit of a lumpy line because wax melts. And then it's going to come and continue around the back. 
So you're doing kind of this pool cue. shape on the top. You uh, see yeah. that? Yep. Okay. And then the, we'll have the wick, which is just a line. And then the flame. And flames can be really long and skinny. And I really like that look, so I'm going to do that. But sometimes flames are just that, you know? So, like, you can decide, but I felt like it was really cool to kind of do this long, skinny flame. That looks cool. And remember, your initial sketch doesn't have to be the one. So let's say that you do this and you're like, oh, I actually don't really, I want this to be maybe thinner. So the shape we're doing is essentially kind of like a teardrop shape where there's a point at the top and then it curves at the bottom, but we're just stretching it out like a, like just pretend we're taking that and going like a melted teardrop. Yeah, exactly. So it's just going to kind of do that. And you can see here, you can do a bunch of different sketches to play with it. All of these would work great. Because when we do the coloring and the lights, you're going to tell. Just make sure it kind of goes to a kind of narrow point at the top. I think that looks really cool. That. And that, and then I'm just going to um, check my widths. Okay. And there's different styles of candles. Some of them are those like nice wide round ones. Some of them are like really long and skinny. If you can do those like cool age ones where maybe like the wax is dribbling down, you can do that, but we're keeping it simple here. Okay. I was actually thinking it'd be neat to make, instead of a candle, be a, like a skeleton finger. Ooh, that would be cool. Kind of extra creepy. Yeah, kind of like you just do a bone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a wand? Ooh. You can do like sparks. <gasps> that would be cool. Yeah. And then you Maybe can say Lombardi Minigan this morning. Snow. <laughs> Lombardi. Lombardi. Lombardi's nope. the goat. Nope. Lombardian Lingozzo. There you go. That's it. <laughs> I know what you're trying to say. Lombardian. <laughs> Leviosa. Leviosa. <laughs> I don't think the Are first. You sure? It's not Leviosa. It's Leviosa. Oh, I remember that scene in the movie. <laughs> I can't remember the first word though. Wimbardi. Wingot. Wingardian. Win. Wimbledon, we're moving Leviosa. on. We're moving on, but you all know what we're saying. <laughs> you get it. Okay, so there's our sketch, and um, that feels pretty good. Now my candle feels a little bit long in this compared to my reference photo, so I'm thinking through. How do I say this? If you're going off a reference photo and you want your proportions to be similar to what's happening here, let me show you an easy tool. You can use your fingers as a way to do equal parts. So my candle, let's say from the bottom to the top is this long. That is almost as long as my flame and the top is a little bit shorter. So then I can go to my paper and say, okay, here is my candle top to bottom. You can tell that this portion of my candle is longer in this paper because here, when I compare it, you can use a pencil or your fingers. When I compare it to here, it doesn't go quite all the way to the top. It only goes almost to the top. This one goes all the way to the top. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So then if you want to adjust it so it's more like the reference photo, then you would just move it down. You, and it, it would just be a little bit. It wouldn't be a lot. But again, that's all up to you. So then we would just move everything down a little bit. Okay. And then you can kind of like check it. But that's just a little tool if you're going off a of reference photo and you're trying to look at the proportions of the things and how they relate to each other and then compare that to your own painting. But it's not like going this and this. Does that make sense? Because yep. these are two different sized papers. You know, it's interesting what? how you just described that. I was starting to think of different things that would be like helpful for me. Yeah. 
And so I thought, well, the way you described it makes it sound like, what if I divided what I'm doing with the actual subject and split the page into three parts? Uh huh. If that would be beneficial visually? Yeah. But then I thought, what kind of tool would be useful? And I thought of a ruler, but that seems so official. I, I mean, you can use rulers, and, and I know it sounds silly. I really struggle with rulers. I don't know why I avoid them at almost all costs. So I like to use things like my fingers or the sides of pencils or things like that. It's easier for me in my mind to make measurements that way than by an actual ruler. Yeah. But some people really like rulers and like utilize them well. <laughs> I'm just not one of those people. So use whatever you feel comfortable using. I will also want to call attention to if this is centered or not. I know that usually I say, try not to have your uh, subject be the center of your composition, but I felt like for this project, I would want this mostly in the center. Um, so you can check and just be like, okay, is this centered? Okay, it's a little bit bigger on the right-hand side, which is not a huge deal. And then you can kind of check that. Here's this one and here's same thing. I have a little bit more space on this side. I don't think it throws anything off. That's fine. You just kind of want to like look at these things. All right. Okay. I think now we are ready to paint. I'm just going to adjust where my flame goes. Okay. And as you get to painting, if you need to change your mind about something, you absolutely can. This is not set in stone. This is a guide. So I'm going to start by doing my background with my round 12. I'm going to do a black background, except, and if you look at my step-by-step -step here, when I get to around the flame, I'm going to do brown here, okay? So let's mix some brown so that's ready to go. Brown is essentially dark orange, so I'm going to take my magenta and my yellow to make orange. And then I'm going to mix black in there. So now I have a really dark brown and I want it to be a more orangey brown. So I'm going to mix more of the red, more of the yellow. And that looks really dark on the screen, but in person it's lighter. And I'm going to add more yellow. That feels good. That's a good brown. Okay. And then for the black, we're just going to use black. And we're just going to go. Now with gouache, um, it's opaque, but sometimes, depending on how much water is on your brush, um, you might get like a lighter value, so it's not totally, you see how it's a little transparent? Well, you might not be able to see that on camera, but it's a little bit more transparent on the top, and you'll see this as this dries. Um, you'll see the unevenness in your lines as it dries. And if that's happening and you're like, oh, I want this to just be pitch black, all you gotta do is a couple um, layers. That already looks cool. So I'm gonna be doing black essentially around this whole thing. And I'll even do it like a little bit here. And we'll go more into that when we actually paint our candle, but you can kind of establish that it does fade into darkness. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> And you can overlap the candle a little bit if you want, because we will be painting on top of it. And then at this point, well, actually, let me do, I'm going to want to do the black around the back part here. And now I am going to grab the brown that I already mixed.
and you can let it overlap with the kind of black edges here. So try and avoid the flame that you sketched out. Candles are an ancient human pastime device. Ancient, like 500 BC. Dang. I know. Well, that's how they were able to do anything at night, right? Yeah, but it's just candles. Candles. Okay, so I got my brown, I got my black, and now I want the, um, the brown to be a little bit stronger. And as you can see, my painting is starting to dry. You can see where there's a lighter like black. You see that right here? Yes. Okay, so that's just saying, Sarah, you gotta do another layer um, to make that nice and black on there. But first I'm gonna go to my brown. And I, I think I'm gonna do another layer and I'm gonna lean it more towards red. So I'm gonna take some fresh yellow and I'm gonna take some magenta. And I still have brown on my brush from when I was laying that color down, which is fine. Just kind of mixing in there. Okay, let's see this color. I want it to be pretty like vibrant. So if you need to use just like yellow and red around here, that's okay too. Just kind of blend it out. And this, I just lay down straight magenta and I'm just kind of working that into the colors here. So what we're trying to communicate here is that a candle in a dark room, it illuminates the darkness around it. So in order for us to paint that, this is why we're doing a value shift here. This is why, and by value shift, I mean value shift by hue. So it's going to like, um, like a lighter black. Does that make sense? But I, I wanted it to be more colorful and warm than gray. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can use gray. Um, like you could do this whole thing where this area would just be a lighter value of black and it will communicate illumination, but I wanted to really make sure that that warmth of the flame was communicated across everything. So I decided to lean more towards browns and oranges and yellows um, instead of just white and gray. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, we're gonna just like let that be for a second, okay? And I'm gonna move on to doing another layer of black. And if you can see some brush stroke, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. And I actually kind of like that painterly look of like brush stroke and texture, um, but this is your painting. So you can change it however you need to, to whatever you like. I feel like my left side didn't get as light in value. I feel mm. pretty good with how dark it is, but maybe a couple strokes just for good measure. Especially making sure you go all the way to the edge of the paper so you know you can get that nice clean line. Okay, that feels good. We're gonna move on to step Three, where we were going to paint the actual candlestick itself. And actually, I feel like I need to straighten this.
This is where you're gonna kind of look at the shape. It seems like it's bending a little bit, but when I go to paint it, I'll straighten out this edge. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So you can straighten out your candle when you're actually painting it itself. Um, okay, so we're gonna try and make a desaturated cream, that kind of waxy color. So in order to do that, I have brown here already mixed. I'm gonna take that brown and I'm gonna add white to it. And then we're just gonna see what color comes up. Oh, look at that. It's like a wax color. Oh, wow, waxy. Yeah. Now, if you want it to be warmer, I feel like there's different like colors of wax, you know? So you guys can adjust the color as you see fit. I wanted it to feel very aged, and I feel like aged wax has like this yellowness to it. So I'm gonna grab some yellow and introduce that to my wax color. That feels better. And then you'll notice here that there is a value shift on my candle. That's how we're showing like this light is illuminating the top and then as it fades away from the light the darkness is taking over okay so i need to have a value shift ready to go to mix so i want essentially white for the highlight if you look here i actually have a very, i have a white edge on the bottom part of my candle and then i go to my actual candle color itself and then i want it to fade into black. But black is very, very strong. So you wanna just like, like the black I just introduced here is taking over that color completely. So I need to start a new pile. And let's add some white to it. I forgot that white one was there. <laughs> I couldn't even see it till you did that. There we go. That feels better and that can mix in with this till eventually it's gonna go to nothing, okay? So this is just like a starting place for our different values and then we'll adjust it as we see fit. I'm gonna move to my six and I'm gonna grab this really light value here. And I'm gonna start putting that in. And I can see on my reference photo, I have a little bit more warmth. So when you see that, you can just pick up more color. You would need 61 candles to light up a room that has one LED light. Really? So, so one LED light basically is, it's, well, it's 800 lumens that an LED light is, and a candle is 13. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I kind of started with my lightest value here and I'm kind of like looking at how wide my candle is and making sure my edges are nice and sharp. Okay. And you might need to do a couple layers to kind of overpower that black. I'm gonna leave that for a second. I'm gonna keep working my way down. So I'm just gonna grab from the values that I've already mixed and let them overlap the previous color and kind of work it back and forth. Get a new, nice smooth blend. And then I'm gonna do the next dark value. Work that back and forth. And then I'm gonna grab even more. And at this point, we wanna be like, if not black, like so close to black. Okay. Now this is a good starting point. And this is where you're just like, okay, I've essentially established where my values are gonna transition. I kinda of have a fade going on. And now this is where it's just like, how can I make this a little bit richer. I feel like I got some vibrancy right here on this candle. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. That spot right there? I feel like it's missing from here, which this is the wonderful thing about 
gouache is you let it dry, you can do another layer right on top of it. So to get that vibrancy, what I want to do is I wanna mix a light value, but avoiding white, because white tends to like desaturate colors a little bit, I feel. I mean, I could be crazy, but sometimes if I know that I need just like a hint of orange, I'm not gonna to wanna to bring white into the mixture. I agree with that because when you adjust the exposure on a camera, so if you raise the, the brightness, mm -hmm. you lose image depth so, okay. because you also lose color. So it, the white overpowers, Yeah. the light overpowers. And then I'm just doing like a thin layer of yellow on top to kind of keep going with that aged look. But remember, because opaque, because water, because gouache is opaque, it can overpower the values that we already established. So just remember that as you work your way down, you want to make sure that you're adjusting your value too. And then when I get to the bottom here, it needs to be more black. I need to put more black on my palette. And if you're, my candle is still looking a little bit, the shape is a little bit lost still, but we can tighten that up. So it's just like, where do I want my candle edge to be? How does that feel? And then I need to address the other side. Okay, and I feel like it, it's widening at the bottom, which I kind of want it to stay a little bit more parallel. So I'm gonna try and straighten that out. Okay, and then I want to introduce this like pure black at the bottom and then blend that into so I'm just kind of taking the color that I just laid down and just kind of working it up into the candle. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush, kind of where these two areas meet. It's just gonna be a damp brush. I don't have a lot of water on my brush, but it's clean. And you're just gonna start kind of blending this out to try and get smooth. Now what's tricky is black is so powerful that you see it just keeps working its way up into my candle. You see how it's working its way up? Yeah. When that happens, grab some of the lighter value and push it down. So you say, I'm gonna, I want you to keep dark down here actually. So I'm gonna just grab some color and then work down instead of continuing to work up. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. but it's kind of like a balancing act and you just have to keep moving, working up and working down and working up and working down until you feel that it's smooth. Till that transition feels like, oh yeah. 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 That's the ticket. There we go. Now, this light value that I put in up here is so light that it actually is shifting the shape of my candle. So I need to go back in and kind of darken this edge so then it doesn't look like a deep, like you, you know what I'm saying? I needed to tighten that edge up. And I'm just kind of blending. And I still just really am missing just a hint of just warmth. So I'm gonna try and put that in. Oh, that was There nice. we go, that feels better. Let's see if I can like 
introduce that richness into my down here. And I know that with these projects, we have been um, really working on hue and color and value transitions a lot. And I just want to say that it feels sometimes a little exhausting because <laughs> you're like, oh gosh, I put it and now I got to go this way. And this is just the nature of creating a smooth transition. You're not doing it wrong by how long it takes you. Um, it really just takes patience. It's like the the Harvest Moon project. Yeah. Got to get that smooth yeah. transition. And two, also, um, as you paint, you're, it's going to dry differently, right? I'm going to try and introduce a little bit of brown to this. So I use black a lot as a way to adjust the value to make it a darker value. But if that's reading as too gray, Let's see what happens if you put a little bit of brown in there. Can you get that kind of hint of a dark value, but with some warmth? Hmm. Okay. And now I'm feeling like this section here to here is even in value. Like if you were to cut off this and cut I, off this. I agree with that. Okay, so when that happens, it's just like, okay, I want there to be more transition. You got to go and put a value that's in between in there. And if that means making your, your dark colors kind of like go up a little bit more, that's what that means. Okay, and now I feel like my black line is um, pretty strong, like just horizontally across, and I want it to fade a little bit better. So I'm gonna put some color in, take some out. Man, this is a cool project. I mean, already. I'm going to just do some strong color here. Yellow, red. That feels better. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to let that be just for a second. And I'm going to move to my two because we got to paint the other side, like the inside of the candlestick that's... Um, that we see. So what essentially what we're going to do is we're going to leave a really thin white ridge here to communicate that's the front of the candle. And then it's going to go to a really dark value around the wick and then transition to a lighter value at the top. But our area is like this big compared to this big. So it's, we're not going to be too, too detailed, but we absolutely want a value transition. So I'm going to grab some dark brown that I still have on my palette. And then right around this wick, remember I'm leaving a thin white line in between. I start the dark brown and then I grab the colors that I already have to transition to kind of that yellow creamy color. I'm excited for that background. Yeah. And it's, the flame. The flame, the flame is one of those things where um, just actually a few like little highlights and hints is all you need. Cool. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like looking at the shape of my candle and adjusting the edge a little bit. And 
And if you accidentally like paint over that white edge, it's not the end of the world because we do have a white highlight. I'm gonna thin mine out because it just got a little bit too wide. There we go. Okay. And you have to also like think about making sure there's black kind of working its way around. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry for a second before I go in and do more. I need to basically redo this clean edge, like uh, not redo a clean. I need to do this edge more clean, so I need to let this dry for a second before I go back in and try and make any more adjustments. And then if you're feeling kind of edgy and what I like to do is when it's dry like this, just check to make sure it was dry with my finger. And it mostly is. I really like to mix vibrant colors and just do like bold strokes. Ooh, yes. It doesn't have to be a lot, but just enough to be like pop of color, bam. It's funny actually how you put color on your paintbrush and then when you actually touch the paper, how little comes off your paintbrush onto the paper. I yeah. always expect it to be more. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Why is that? Why, why, how are you getting, cause it looks like you're full on dipping your paintbrush in the paint and then you put on, well, for the composition, an aggressive amount of paint, but for in my brain, it's not that much paint because I'm touching the paper lightly with my brush. So I'm not like, oh. so I'm not picking up all of this paint and then just like pressing down really hard so all of that paint gets transferred. I'm picking up a good amount, but then just gently bringing that to the page. Okay. Where like, if I were to pick up, this is gonna mess up my painting, but if I'm just like picking up so much paint and I do this, uh, oh. you see? Yes. So I'm doing light pressure brush strokes. That's why not a lot of the paint is being transferred over. Got it. But that's a great question, Keenan, and can be really confusing to people who are like, wait a second. Yeah. So I'm just gonna transition this out. <laughs> I see you're playing the paint over there. <laughs> so even just that little hint of color right there, I don't know, I just really love it but I feel like my black needs to. There we go, that feels better. And I feel like, see how I have this highlighted edge right here? Yeah. I feel like it's actually messing with the three-dimensionality of my candle. Hmm. So I'm gonna try and match this medium hue or this medium value so that edge can continue to go around and disappear. Got it rather than potentially making it look like it's curving around? If you have a strong, how do I say this? When you have a lighter value edge, it our brain knows that things that are a highlighted value are what's closest to us. So if the side of a candle that is turning away from us has a very strong highlight it edge, then the volume that we're trying to make of trying to create an illusion of a three-dimensional object that goes away from us actually is pulling forward. That white edge is matching its plane with the front of the candle because of the highlight. Does that make sense? Yep. So if you notice that you have an edge on your candle that is a highlight, especially the same value of this highlight up here, then instead of the, it creating the illusion that we're pulling away, it's gonna bring the side of that candle back up. And then all of a sudden we're like, wait, is this a square blocky candle or what is it actually mm. rounding away from us? So look at your edges and look at those values and are they actually matching it or is there a little bit of a highlight that you need to kind of adjust? 
Okay, now I'm a little bit more convinced that it's fading into darkness. I feel like, see how this edge is popping out though? Yeah. Got to do something about it. Hide it. Oh, that looks cool. And maybe a little bit more. Yeah, now I'm a little bit more convinced. Okay, and this part still looks funky, that's okay. We're not touching that part yet, we're not there yet. We're gonna leave that be for just for a second. And we're gonna move on to our flame. So, if you look at the reference photo here of the flame, I actually kept the flame itself white. I did not paint that white, that's the white of the paper. But if you look at the very edge of my flame, if you go just around the outline, I have yellow and I have red and I have orange. So you're gonna take mm -hmm. these very saturated hues and that is gonna give the impression of that warmth right there, right where that flame is meeting the air. And then if you look at my wick here, I have a little hint of blue because as you guys know, the really, the like source of the heat that like where it's condensed or you know fires and stuff like that, there's blue. Now where you would want to use white in this flame is if maybe accidentally you covered um, you painted over the flame that you originally drew out when you were putting in your background. So then you can just like reshape using your two. And I really like like the thinnest line up here. Okay. Rinse that out. And now I'm going to grab yellow, but just yellow. Add a little bit of water in there to make it fluid, like make it easier to brush on. And I'm just gonna work. Around the flame. So you're kind of going into the white a little bit so that yellow can really stand out and you're kind of going into the brown a little bit. And then I'm gonna grab some magenta, mix it with a little bit of yellow so it turns that like nice red color. And if you want it to be more orange than red, you can just mix more yellow in there. But we want it to be strong in color. We want it to be bold. So I'm just putting like nice thick But look at this yellow out in the middle. Mm. You see how that is shifting? So you just take that out. There we go. Cool. And the reason why I'm going a little bit into the white is because when you put a color on a white surface, that color is gonna be brighter. Even though it's the same amount of yellow, when I paint it on the white, that yellow shows up. When I paint the yellow on the brown, it kind of shows up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm letting these strong colors overlap onto the white. So then our viewer can see, oh, that yellow, oh, that orange. Nice. Even though they don't know that they're actually seeing it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do know what you mean by seeing a color but not seeing a color. Yeah. Because that happens all the time. Plot twist, this whole thing is green. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna do kind of where the blue, the wick meets the blue. So I have a little bit of my cyan here. You just need a little, you don't need a lot. I'm gonna mix that with my white. And just right at the base, can they see that close up? So I put in my blue and then I'm gonna go for just straight cyan right at this. So even with my cyan, there's a dark and then a light blue. And then it's gonna to transition to the yellow. And when you overlap it, there's gonna be a little bit of a green, but that's okay. 
Because that's what happens when you mix flame. The blue and the yellow together, you get green. Oh. But yeah, flame. <laughs> <laughs> And this seems like such a small thing, but when you do these kind of just warm edges, warm highlighted edges, that really communicates so much to our viewer. That's what makes this feel warm. Okay. Okay. All right, let's go back to the overhead. Yeah, look at that yeah. lit up. I'm gonna do actually a little bit of red right at the, right at the tip. right around that kind of yellow orange. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I'm gonna put on my wick and my wick is just black. I'm not trying to be too difficult here. And then now I'm going to go in on my edge and try and kind of straighten that up on my candle. So I'm trying to mix like a cream colored. So I have white, I have a little bit of brown, I have yellow. I feel like the back part of this needs to be bigger. Hmm. No, that's not it. We're gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna actually take some of that out. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use my white, and I'm gonna do a highlighted front edge. So I kind of blended out my edge at this point on my painting. And I want to kind of like sharpen that front a bit. And what I'm gonna do before I do that is I'm gonna do a darker value on this back part of the candle to push it back into space. So what's happening here is I'm trying to create a lip and then the top like back part of the candle, but it is the values are competing in a way where it's not convincing that it's two different planes. Does that make sense? So I need to push this, the like top part back and then I need to highlight that edge. So then it's just like, this is farther away right underneath the flame and this is what's facing us. So I'm actually gonna make this a darker value back here. Okay. And then I'm gonna go with a white. And just kind of do a little jacket highlighted edge. Now looking at that highlight, if that's too bright, you can just go in with a slightly little bit of color on it and tone that white down. But we still want it to be the like strongest, like the highlightest value on our candle. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And I don't want it to be perfectly smooth. 
So I'm kind of creating like a little bit of a jagged line. And then you gotta think about where this edge kind of meets the back, kind of how it turns, like edges around. Okay. And then the back, I want to make a little bit more jagged. And then I think like that back edge needs a little bit of a highlight. I did a good job pushing it back, but now it kind of has faded. So I just need to be like, nope, there's still something back here. It's not competing with our foreground, but there's still something there. So I need to do just a little bit of a light value. I'm still using my two just for this detail work. Okay, that feels better. I still think that white is a little bit too bright. So I'm just gonna do another layer on top to try and tone it down. And I wanna call attention to one thing, which is these concepts that I'm talking about in terms of how values are relating to each other and how that's affecting our candle and how it, that changes the shape and all. These are not beginner concepts. I just want to acknowledge that. So if you are struggling and you're just like, I can't even see what it is that you're trying to say, um, it's not you. This just takes a little bit of time to pay attention to those small shifts. Um, but my goal by doing this is you'll just start to pay attention to them because that's like the trickiest part is just acknowledge, like recognizing that they're there just looking at them. So even if you might not get what it is that I'm saying, I hope that you can at least kind of follow along with the marks and see how it's kind of shifting the shape of the candle with every slight change. And the more you follow along, the more likely it is you'll see those changes. Yeah. I'm gonna let that be. Now, we are kind of like nearing the end, which is now this is where we're gonna start doing our bokeh. So, for the bokeh part, sorry, I saw a little highlight on that candle that was driving me nuts. Okay, for the bokeh part, what I'm trying to communicate here is like far away candle, or maybe there's like flames in the distance, just a little bit of movement. If you wanted to keep this static where it's just a single candle, what you would do is you would just blend this black and brown to a smooth transition and that's it. And then it would be a single candle in a lit up room. I mean, in a dark room, you would just transition that out. For us, what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna mix a bunch of different browns and create um, overlapping circles to give the hint that there is illumination coming from other sources. So you can just use all the different colors that are already there and just try and get a bunch of different browns going on. And then what I'm going to do before I start that is I'm going to transition the black up a little bit more on my flame. So you see, if you look at the reference photo, the like reddish brown mark starts kind of up here where on my painting, it goes out even with the candle. Mm. So I'm gonna just move this up. That's convenient. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, so basically we're just trying to blend this in a little bit. 
and we're going to be covering up a lot of these spaces. There we go. That feels, that feels better. Now I'm going to take my six and I'm just going to start putting in different size circles hmm. using different shades or different browns. And I'm going to let these circles kind of overlap each other too. And I want you to notice that some of these browns are really dark, so they barely stand out. And some of them are really more vibrant. If you want the vibrant ones, don't add white, do orange. So if you want, let me show you. If I were to take this brown and just add yellow to it, this is the color I would get. Or just add white to it. That feels disjointed from yeah, our painting. Yeah, that doesn't seem connected at all. Whereas if I take just yellow and magenta to make a, an orange or a red, I'm gonna do more orange. And I paint that here. It stands out more, it's brighter, but it's not disjointed from our painting. Yeah. So you see that? You mm -hmm. see how it feels brighter, but it isn't like... Aggressive. Aggressive. It isn't... And it's, different. It still feels like it's in the same world. Right. The other thing that you can do to kind of make the bokeh look more realistic is when you overlap them, the area in which the circles overlap will be a little bit brighter. Hmm. Think of it like when you do a light yellow over a light yellow that are transparent, where they both overlap, that yellow is stronger. That so makes sense. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Now I got to cover up that like random. <laughs> but I can with gouache, which is why it's fun. Gouache. I'm going to make it that a little bit bigger. And the other, and so I'm trying to create a movement that it's going this way across. But if you want it just kind of, I felt like it was important to have a movement. So then it like, maybe there are, I, I don't know. Wind blowing. I just didn't. Traveling candles. Yeah. I wanted it to feel like the bokeh had a shape instead of it just being kind of like floating dots. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I kind of start over here. And then as I kind of like move away, my browns get a little bit darker. So I'm just creating circles. And this is why we want different dark browns and light browns. And I need to do more orange. Now you want to make sure that you're happy with your background color before you do your bokeh. So if you see some areas where you're like, actually, that's not as smooth as I want, or I want to do one more layer, you want to address that before you do your bokeh. Starting to look really cool already. And you can see I don't really have a lot of rhyme or reason besides I'm trying to create an angle here. That's it. That's that's my rhyme and reason. So then you could did you choose that direction based on your flame or just the direction you see in your head? Just the direction I saw in my head, because in order for me to get this, I looked at a photo of a candle, like in a black room. And then I also looked at different pictures of candles with bokeh. And so there was one where it was kind of like angled 
like up. And I was just like, ooh, that's really pretty. Okay, I'm nice. going to combine these two cool. things. So they're kind of independent from each other, but not so much that I, I, I wanted it to still feel like they were in the same world. Mm -hmm. And then if you paint, let's say you paint a bokeh circle and it's so bright that it actually is affecting the composition to the point where it's like drawing your eye, like this circle is doing right here, you can just go over it with a darker value and cover it up. Gouache. Gouache, that's cool. <laughs> Gouache, that's cool. <laughs> And some of these circles, like this I think is the trickiest part with bokeh. You do not want it to distract from your painting. You want it to complement your painting. So I have these bokeh elements, but if you do them in too light of a value where it feels like it's competing with your subject, then you need to darken them. You need to lower those values so it's not like taking over everything. And try and have them relate to this like highlighted brown that we have with our candle. So some of these that we're doing out here are barely there. And that's what we want. We want these to be subtle. Okay, so I've done quite a few different circles and now I'm gonna look at where some of them overlap and do a little bit of that kind of like overlap highlight. That one here. It doesn't have to be a lot, just like a little shift. Do, 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 do. And I feel like something needs to overlap here. There we go. So we're still just kind of putting in our different bokeh circles using different browns, oranges, just kind of taking time to step back as well and saying, is this competing? Is this drawing my eye to a place where I do not want the viewer's eye to go? And if you want the viewer's eye to go there, then like, by all means, do it, you know? Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, you know. Send them over there. Send them over there. With a ticket for awe and amazement. <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, I like that. Did you put more red in there? Yeah. I like those ones. This is just like magenta. And I feel like it needs one here. Okay. 
And then the nice thing about gouache is you can take some out. So let's just say, oh, I don't really like how that one looked. Or any of them. So I'm just going to take that out. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. If you're just like, this actually isn't doing what I want it to do. Take it out, my friend. And then I'm going to just kind of tighten in the flame on this area again. There we go. Maybe a little bit here. And then, okay, I'm gonna leave the bokeh alone for a second and I'm gonna go back to my flame. And I feel like this flame feels um, wispier. Hmm. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. So you can change the wispiness of your um, flame. All you have to do is you basically just thin it out. So I'm bringing in my flame using a similar color to what I used as my um, like brown reddish highlight around it and we're still gonna do we'll do the highlight again after we bring it in okay so I'm gonna make this go up a little bit more using just a tiny bit of white really thin strokes And then just using straight yellow along the edge. I feel like it kind of goes. And let's round out that bottom to make a more teardrop shape using white. Feels better. Let's do this kind of highlight on the edge of my candle stick. There we go. And these are just small changes. Small little changes. It's better. I think my black wick needs to go deeper. There we go. And what I did too, just for that little extra flare of like brightness, is I did little yellow kind of dots around some of these bokeh areas. Just to kind of add to that feeling of like warmth and sparks and you know, like just yes. a little hint. And you can also use this yellow to do some of the bokeh overlaps. But remember, don't do anything like this might be too big that little yellow what do you think should i leave it do you like it i mean i've seen sparks that big all right let's leave it Okay. 
And there could be some areas where you're like, oh, I didn't even see that overlap. Okay, let's put that in. And if the yellow overlap is too strong, try orange. I think we're just about done. I just want to shape this a little bit more, bring that in. Yeah, there we go. That feels wispier to me. You're doing it, guys. You're doing great. So, you're doing so well. You're doing so well. Look how far you've come already. Look at, look at how cool, look at how cool our candle is. How wispy. There we go. There we go. There's that little highlighted edge. Nice. That we needed. And just one more hint of dark brown white right in the wick like right where that inside here I don't know why I just feel like it needs it I'm just kind of checking things now. I'm thinking, does this feel convincing? Does this feel convincing? What about this edge? Do I need to do another black? And sometimes you won't know until you walk away. And let it totally dry. <laughs> okay. I feel convinced that this is a candle in a dark room lit up with other things going on, lights or bokehs. <sighs> I think we're done. Nice. Ah, <sighs> okay, should we do the reveal? <laughs> yes, always. All right. Does gouache dry faster? It does. That's Gu nice too. Gouache dries pretty fast. I f I'm almost certain it dries faster than acrylic. Look at that edge. Wow. Oh my gosh. This is one of those that when you take the tape off, you're like, Holy crap. Yep, nothing I, can beat this. I just painted that. <laughs> Too good. There we go. There is our candle, you guys. Nice. Oh, okay. I hope you guys had fun with it. I hope you learned a lot. I hope that you were patient and kind to yourself because this was one where we really kind of zeroed in on the smallest changes. And hopefully by doing that, you guys could see how little shifts can really affect your work in a positive way. Um, I hope that you take this idea of illumination and light and black dark rooms and run with it see what else you can make by learning these concepts of you know just doing little highlights here and wherever that light is illuminating the space it's going to be a lighter value and shifting your values by hues by colors instead of just adding water so take this 
play with it, run with it, have fun with it, and share what you make. We want to see it. If you are on Facebook, you can uh, join our watercolor group. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. If you're on an Instagram, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art. We love to see what it is that you're making. We love that you take time to paint with us. We love that you prioritize your creativity. You guys are the best. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.